In this video, I'll walk through an example of finding the volume of a solid using shells. Our example asks us to find the volume of a solid that results when the region bounded by y equals x and the line x equals 2 and the x-axis is rotated about the y-axis. So we've got our boundary or our region which is bound by those lines given and then that whole region will be swept around rotated about the y-axis. So if we were looking at this solid from the side we would not see just the region the whole solid we would see both sides of that solid and it it's it's swept around so we would see the front of this too so this is just a, a cross section you could think of uh, if we chopped that solid in half and then looked at it or coming in from the top if we looked at it just from the top well that would just be uh, a circle it would just look like a circle and and certainly depending on the lighting you could see that it that it uh, went in or dipped down as it does here and was high up here but but still you would see a circle well we could cut cylinders cylindrical shells out of that and so let's say it's that's about right in the middle let's say I cut this shell right here and if I swept that around this would be the same shell so part of that same red shell that I cut so that's looking at it from a cross section and then looking at it from the top here now what would be the surface area of that shell well the area of that shell would be the uh, the circle 2 pi r where this is the radius of that times times this height, whatever the height is of, the, of, that, uh, of that cylindrical shell. But what about the volume? The volume, well, if I took this red thing and I stretched it out, I unrolled it, then I would just get a, a, uh, a straight piece, just a, a, a straight uh, rectangle, if you will. Well, that's going to have some depth to it because this shell will necessarily have some depth to it. And that depth, that thickness, is going to be our dx. So then if we wanted to find the volume the volume of each shell, we would say 2 pi r times the height times dx, some, some change in x. Okay, so now we have the volume, but now what, is, what about this r and x? We can't just deal with r or r and h because um, we, want, we want it in values of uh, terms of x or, or y. So the r is going to be just the x value right so if this is r well that's the same thing as whatever x is at that point we're going to add up what we're going to do is we're going to end up adding up a bunch of shells here all kinds of shells so they'll have all different radii if you will all these different shells <coughs> so the radius of any individual shell is just going to be whatever x is, whatever the value of x is. And the, the height, the height of any given shell is going to be the y value, right? This, this height equals whatever y is at any given time. Now, we have this relationship, so in our example, we're going to plug in x, 
And now that's not always going to be the case, that our height is the same as our radius here. But in this example, we have that just because, because of the line that we're using. If we were using x squared, then, then x squared would be our height. Okay. So, this is our volume of each individual shell, and that's 2 pi times x times, I'm going to say y just to keep it general, but we know that in our example, we're going to plug in this x for the y, or a lot of books will say f of x, and that's fine. That's, kind of, that's the same thing as saying y. Uh, multiply by the dx, that's our volume. Okay, we're going to have to add all of those up. Add all, and to add all of, those, all of those little shells up, we use the magic of integrals, or calculus, and we say then the volume equals the integral of all of these little shells, all of these added up. So we have 2 pi times x times our x, and that's, again, that's our, that's our y, our height. Okay, and then multiplied by dx. And what about here? What, what are we going to set our limits to? Well, it's just as far as x goes in this region. So in this case, it goes from 0 all the way out to, well, we're given that x equals 2. It stops right there. So from 0 to 2. So our volume, then, is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of 2 pi x squared dx, or taking the antiderivative of that, the volume equals 2 pi, I'll keep that on the outside, times the antiderivative is x to the third over 3, evaluated from 0 to 2, and when you do that, you get a volume equal to 2 pi, being multiplied by 8, right? 2 to the third is 8. So 8 over 3 minus 0 over 3, because we have to consider this 0, which, for the fraction lovers of you, that is 16 thirds pi, and for the decimal lovers of you, that is approximately... 16.76. So, there was a nice example of finding the volume using shells.